Hello, good morning, welcome back to the fish locker out on the boat. Out on another stunning morning on the boat. It's fine in here, but I have a feeling that it might be quite sloppy out there. But a really busy couple of weeks these last two weeks. The kids have only just gone back to school. There's been a couple of competitions that I've been part of organising. And I've got a bunch of my mates down with their own boats. There's one of them, there's Dave Collins from the Solent Warrior just over there. We're actually, we're out for my mate's birthday tuna fishing yesterday as well. So yeah, what a scream. Today though, it is a little bit of fishing just for me. I'm going to go and throw some lures around today. Hopefully, catching something to eat. I have brought my wetsuit, so if the conditions are right, I might have a scavenge around on the seabed too. We'll just see how it goes. Let's go. We're approaching the first little bit of reef that I want to fish today. I don't know quite how I'm going to do it yet, I'm going to see what the drift's like. I have two different setups. I have a jigging setup and I have a, like a soft plastic or a spinner setup. Now my jigging setup, if the tide is still slack, and get away with using my jigging setup. I'm going to use like a little metal jig. And if the tide's running quite fast, I have a spinning setup. Now I'll show you the lures I'm going to be using throughout the day. These are these are the ones I'm going to be using. They're um, they're a prototype that I'm actually designing in conjunction with Sidewinder. And we're, we've nearly got it nailed down. This is like the the third revision. But yeah, I am. Um, very very pleased with these these are absolute fish slayers and the jigs the jigs are these little mimic jigs you catch everything everything including the seabed right i know what i've done here is i've stopped myself just up from just up from where i want to be fishing and i want to see which way i'm going to drift that way i'll know <laughs> the first one's always kind of like a sacrificial drift Occasionally you get it right, most often you just use it to teach you which way the boat's going to go from then on. I'm going to put a jig on, just in case, Let's see if we can't have a couple of casts. Go for a pollock, a bass or a wrasse. If it's not fishing well on this area of the reef, I'll move to a different piece. I'll give this area about half an hour and then if it's not fishing, I'll move on to the next one. It's just all about finding where the fish are. These fish don't all stay in one place, they don't move about, you just need to find them. Little ballon, Russ. I've got a load of layers on today because when I left the house, <laughs> this is the coldest it's been in a while. It was about four degrees when I left the house this morning, so I've got like five layers on. Sun's come out now and it's stunning. I'll have to start stripping off. I have a little female cuckoo, Russ. I don't know. <laughs> I was just going to say, that mackerel. That mackerel there didn't even flap once on the way up, it just swam straight to the boat. <laughs> this is a poor cod. I'm actually, I'm going to keep this one and use it as a live bait. Yeah, them brass, you need to be right on top of them, otherwise they just bind you straight up. And that one, I'd hooked it near the bottom and it just ran round a piece of kelp. I could feel the fish there, so I just had to back the boat up and get round it. Slaying these this morning. Not what I'm after though. Yeah. I just seem to be fishing on top of a, a shawl of these guys. So I'm gonna 
going to move to a different part of the reef. See if we can't find a little bit more drift. Tell you what, he wasn't coming off. <laughs> a micro pollock. We after one of these, but about ten times bigger. I've either foul hooked something. Oh, it's like a sea cucumber. Just no fight in it at all. <laughs> Dave! It's a massive spider crab on one of them jigs! They really will catch anything. That is, that is crackers up. <laughs> Might keep hold of this actually, because I am after stuff to eat. And he is big enough. Let's go around and try a different part of the reef. More wrasse. <laughs> yeah, let's get out of here. This reef is fishing slow. Nice one. More ras. Cool fish has killed my live bit. Everything just seems to be wrasse. Now I can see that there's better fish down there and they're not wrasse because they're swimming about in the water. I just can't seem to catch hold of them. Not what I was after. Another greedy ras taking the softy. It's one of the things about fishing small tides. Fishing slack tides with no drift down around the bottom, you're going to get ras. The trick is with these guys is to hold them over the side for a couple of seconds until they've shot their ink 
I'll shut their water. Yeah. This is what keeps eating all my live bait. Bless you. Nothing you can do there. The live baits I'm sending down for John Dorries and for bass and for everything else are getting eaten by cuttlefish. <laughs> well, I wasn't after you. There's a little pollock. He's after more mackerel. Mackerel or pilchards. I don't want you. Yeah, I've now got no more live baits left. I need to try and catch some more live baits before I do anything else. Well, you greedy, greedy sod. That is ridiculous. A ballon ras on a dead bait pouting. But he's taking it fair and square, look. There's not much left of it. I'll show you this rig in a second when I've unhooked it, but there, yeah, big circle, look. A chunky great ballon ras. All I had was I had my remaining dead bait poor cod. Ideally, you want you want a live bait. <laughs> you're, uh, you're not gonna you're not gonna do much if you haven't got a live bait. Yeah, unfortunately, the cuttlefish have killed all my live baits, so I was fishing a dead bait, and he's completely eating it. All I'd done was I just had my dead pouting, I mean my dead poor cod, sorry, just rigged up on a circle hook like this with a locked in lead fished near the bottom and all of a sudden there was just a a hoofing great bite and I thought oh nice one we might have picked up some like a jondori or a bass or a cord or anything yeah ballon ras crazy I'll show you a little bit of footage of this cuttlefish now They're incredible the way that they can change colours like that. Yeah, these colour fish are quite nice to eat. So I'm going to hang on to this one. I'm going to have to go. <laughs> I'm loath to leave this reef. But I'm going to have to go off and try and find some live bait somewhere else. Just because I'm constantly getting hits on that and it's just cuttlefish. Just steaming around now trying to find some live bait, you would not believe the difference in what, what a week can make. We've had some real big spring tides. That was when we had our sharking comp. Um, I tell you what, I'll put a little bit of footage into here. The the weather was, <laughs> to say the least, the first day was okay, it was good sharking conditions. The second day was very, very rough. Morning ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Farmer's Bay Shark Comp 2024. When you're ready, let's go. This is the second year myself and another skipper have organised this catch and release shark competition out of Falmouth. We have boats and anglers from all over the country taking part. This year there was over 220 sharks caught and recorded over the two days of the competition. All of this data is relayed to marine scientists helping them better understand the health and size of the local shark populations and the local ecosystem. I targeted threshers inshore and just ended up with a bycatch of bluefin tuna.
fall to pop. Yeah, I am. Don't you panic, I'm all over it. Forget what Definitely got, forget, not my first rodeo. Forget what got on the boat every now and again. <laughs> Get some distance away from it, and it'll clean it up a bit. You're not going to get port and then straight ahead. Yeah. This is mine. Of course, it's pissing down. Why wouldn't it be? Why wouldn't it? Why wouldn't, <laughs> yeah. it? Why well, wouldn't it be absolutely lashing it down the road? It's dragging along. That's why it's only pinwheel and just get it right. It's coming up now. There it is. No, it's not very big. Not very big, but it's just being an awkward spike. Do you want to lead her? Rods away, off the side. Ticking ahead. Yep. Ticking ahead. Perfect. Let me know when it's ready to go back. Straight down, no messing about. And it's tipping it down. Of course it is. Uh. It's gone. Yep, it's gone. The clicker's not on. <laughs> oh, oh, it's gone. Great spot, this one. Yeah, I told you. Okay. Right. A stealth yeah. one. <laughs> oh, right, okay. Cheeky little rascal. <laughs> I heard the fan go, I thought I'd give it a word. Yeah, I saw the other one got hit. Yeah. Anymore. <laughs> it's right. like a slightly stockier fish, this one. Yeah, mate, I'm doing And then yesterday, I had a friend of mine, John Butcher, it was his birthday. So I crewed on a tuna charter on Anglo Dawn for them. And we had six absolutely stunning tunas. I'll put a little bit of that footage in here as well. Big fish fishing today. This method of fishing involves trolling around large lures and attractors called spreader bars. These lures imitate panicking squid, 
and hopefully entice a tuna to strike and take a hook. Happy birthday, John. <laughs> this is a catch and release fishery. After playing the fish to the boat, the fish often need to be revived before they can be safely released. You do this by towing the tuna behind the boat until it's strong enough to be let loose. Yeah, considering the conditions that we'd had yesterday and a couple of days back, so what we've got, oh, missed it. So what we've got today is incredible. And the difference in bait. The last few days there's been bait absolutely everywhere, like mackerels and mackerel pilchard scad, that type of thing. Today they are really hard to find. The little bit of area of reef that I'm on now, I've come here to get a little bit more drift. We've got 0 0.5 knots now instead of 0 0.2. So yeah, a little bit better, but still not great. And we'll um, carry on this drift for about another 100 yards. If all I'm catching is wrasse, because I've already had two cuckoo wrasse here. If all I'm catching is wrasse, I'm going to move somewhere else. Too small to keep, and not what I'm after. Oh. Let the pollock now. What I'm wanting to catch is I'm wanting to catch the things that they're eating. Feels like a nice fish and it's just dragged itself into the kelp. Oh, 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 and he's out. Yes. Oh, blimey, <laughs> I was hoping for a bass, but I'll tell you what, as far as wrasse go, as far as ball and wrasse go, that is a pretty flipping special one. There's the lure. Let me just try and spin this boat around a little bit. Yes, this one. He's a very special balling ross. That one is an absolute jumbo. And there's the lure in his mouth. One of my little prototypes. Yeah, that is a very special one. 
try and balance myself so I can show you it properly. But them colours underneath there. He's oh easy tiger. He's a jumbo. Well, shoot yourself. <laughs> We're back. Yeah. Dropped him back over the side and looked like it wasn't going to go back. So I was going to scoop him out with the net and recover him. As soon as I put the net down there, he was like, nah, I'm not having that. Boom, straight down. But yeah, that was on one of my little prototypes. I don't know when I'm going to have finished working on them, but any luck, these will be these will be in the shops next year. Still not found that bass. There are stacks and stacks of them jellyfish everywhere. There is an amazing amount of jellyfish around. I don't know how well you can see them, but they're everywhere. Just around here, look. There's stacks of them, and they are beautiful. <laughs> I don't know how well you can see it, but there's the kelp down there as well. <laughs> Just seen a bass follow that. <laughs> We're in about 12 metres of water and we've got 10 metres of visibility. I've just seen a bass follow that lure. Oh, oh, I missed it. I thought to myself, the soft plastic's not doing it, so I'll drop down with a jig. Literally, the second that it hit the bottom. Another great donkey of a balance. Oh. That was close. There you go. Full of vinegar. Yeah. Unfortunately, the tides are just that slack that I can't get the bass to commit. I've had, twice now I've had follows, like I can, I can see them, I can see them in the water, I can see them following the lure, they'll come up in the last minute they'll just turn off as if they're just like, oh yeah I know what that is, and then, so yeah, just not having it. Which is frustrating. Yeah. I'm going to phone the other lads up, find out how they're getting on. Then we'll go and get a wetsuit on and go and do a dive. Got ya. End on a fish. Admittedly, it wasn't the fish that I was after, but end on a fish. Let's go. Well, I don't know what happened to all the sunshine. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll get my wetsuit on. Get my wetsuit on and see if I can't find any scallops or any lobsters. The water temperature is 15 degrees. Let's have it.
just steaming on my way back home. I got talking to one of my friends on the radio, Mikey on Julie Girl. He says he might have something for me. So yeah, we'll go and see. One thing about diving, it's really good for clearing out your sinuses. You just gotta be careful though when you get out at water and you take your mask off because you've usually got bogies all the way across your face. <laughs> I did a couple of videos with Mikey early on in the year for uh, monkfish netting. Cracking videos. I'll, t I'll tag them in here. Yeah, I got um, I got down into a tide line got just off the lizard. Yeah, it was just just, just carved into the brown ones with bubbles in their heads. Yeah, yeah. It's like a double one I've never seen before. If you, as you were saying, you're right there. It seems to be a different one every year, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. So that's a kilo. Kilos. Quick, yeah. So, kilo of grain, two kilos lobsters. Bam. Yeah, no worries. You going for a bigger, bigger boat then, or? At this moment in time, this one does need to work. Yeah, it's a nice boat. How old is it? It's a 2009. Oh, right, yeah. No, okay. so I just made a point. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Thank you very much. I know my old one's off by heart, but they've changed. Got a new car. I know because this one's actually the account number. Yeah, I'll text it across, yeah. Just send it across and Yeah, no worries. I'm not. Whereabouts are you tomorrow? I'll be. Hopefully, I'll be down the lizard. I'll be around in the back. Yeah, I'll be south of the lizard. What's up, Denny? It's all plastic, anyhow. Thanks, Mike. Alright, cheers, John. Fantastic. That really was an incredible stroke of luck bumping into Mikey. Considering that I've had a really difficult day at sea for the fishing, the fishing has just been abysmal. I've had a nice ballon rass and that was about it. Considering that, the sea fodder that I've amassed is absolutely spectacular. There's the spider rabbit that I caught on the rod. There's one that I found when I was on the seabed. The couple of fish that kept stealing my live baits. We have an incredible crawfish there from Mikey. That noise is actually coming from the crawfish. It moves these antennas up and it makes a noise on there we have an absolute jumbo of a lobster and <laughs> shows you this one here is actually well above minimum size that one there is an absolute daddy a big meal some fresh mackerel and some delicious scallops <laughs> that is incredible that truly is food fit for a king. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get myself back ashore, go and get Hannah and James, we'll meet up with the lads and we're going to have a cook up. Audio test. Hello Hannah. Hi Jason. Hello mate. Hello. How you doing? Good. Nice to see you. Hannah took the camera with every intention of us showing some of the cooking that we did at the campsite. But as you can imagine, when a gang of fishermen get together, the language can be a little uncouth at times. So if the conversation in these clips doesn't make any sense, that's because I've had to cut some of it out. Yeah, these are big ones. You do these. You do them that way. Yeah. Like that. Like that. Like there used to be a horse on my school called Bruce, and he. So when you go camping, don't forget your horseshoes. Yeah, quite right. But we had scallops, lobster, mackerel, and spider crab cooked over the fires. Dave then cooked some amazing tempura battered cuttlefish. Yeah, nice. And Dave was filming it from behind. Oh, nice. That's oh, yeah. Danish porn. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to get any video. <laughs> <laughs> Every time that clip just saying there's, there's a gorilla in really the crew. Yeah. Yeah. Can you give so, this a bit more of a whiff? Oh, we Is that all right? Yeah. Where are we? Perfect. Yeah. Alright, tomorrow again. There's nothing battling going on. Like, <laughs> 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 I tell you what. I bet they love it. I don't want to blow my own trumpet. <laughs> the, the seal will work. But that is cooked so perfect. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs>
in the water, I bet. All finished off with some marshmallows and chocolate digestive biscuits. Perfect. The barbecue ran on quite late last night and we found from all the fodder that we'd been eating that we actually, and we decided this guy was that old and that special that we were just gonna keep him, keep him alive in a barrel of water. And I kept him in the fridge last night. What we're gonna do is we're gonna V-notch this guy and we're gonna put him back just cause he is such, such an incredible specimen. And then put your hand up against the size of them claws. They're massive, aren't they? They're like the same size as your head. <laughs> I'm not saying something. Just... He is a beauty. It would have been good to eat because he would have fed probably all, all eight of us just in one. Uh -huh. Anybody who's watched our lobster videos before, whether it's the potting ones or the foraging ones, you might have heard me talking about V-notching lobsters. There's a bylaw that protects any lobster that has been marked with a V in its tail. James has got a set of V-notch and peppers. So what we're going to do is we're going to stick a couple of V's in this guy. We're going to take these bands off and we're just going to release him round the corner there. All you do, James, if you can just hold his tail like that, is... Now look. Do you want to do that side? Yeah. There you go. Just push it all the way up to the end. All the way in. There you go. Quick. Well done. And there you go. His tail has been marked with a V-notch. Now eventually they will grow out, but it might take two or three sheds, in which case this lobster might be protected for another 10 or 12 years, meaning that he can have 10 or 12 years worth of breeding. Oh, are you? I'm moving away from him, are you? Smart move. Are we ready, James? Yeah. Whoa. Come on, big lad. See them V-notches? There they are. See you later, big fella. Well, I hope you enjoyed joining us. I hope you found it interesting. All the very best. See you later. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out the Fish Locker YouTube channel where we have hundreds of videos from our adventures just like this one. We upload new videos every Sunday evening, so don't forget to click subscribe and we'll see you on the next one. Let's go!